Hello and welcome to this week's video by the Art Systems Advocacy Team. My name is Jay Santos and this week we're going to talk about uh, line charts. Um, so as you can see here, I already have a screen ready uh, showing uh, a euro to US dollar exchange rate. Super simple, I have two input fields with date pickers, which I'm going to show later, and the graph already set up. So what I'm going to see is this. Uh, as you can see, we have some extra information from your uh, average default uh, line chart. As you can see, uh, any value under 1.2 is in red. Everything, anything above is in blue. And I can also define my start and end date. So let's say I only want to see the values uh, of the exchange rate for January. I'm just going to pick January 31st here, and I dynamically update my uh, my my chart to display these values. So let's see how am I going? Uh, how am I doing all this customization uh, on my chart? Which is you know it, it is relatively basic, but uh, the goal is to give you an idea of how to get started. So I'm going to go back to Service Studio and let's check the preparation for us for our screen, uh, which is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, here uh, on this assign uh, on this assign action, I have the definition of a couple of local parameters, start date and end date, which I use to update the line chart later. I have my aggregate. And then I start to have the line chart specific uh, actions. So the first one is I am initializing the format of the Y axis. So as you can see here, I'm defining uh, a title for my Y axis, a prefix for my values with the dollar sign, and the steps on my grid line, which by default I set to 0 0.025. So let's have a look back at our line chart. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, I have right here written on my vertical, on my y-axis, and I also have the dollar sign and prefix, and this is how it looks at 0.025 grid steps. Of course, once again, uh, I'm using 0.025 because my values are floating between 1.1 and 1.275. You need to check what values are, are good for you. But this is 0.025. This is uh, 0.05. As you can see, my step goes from 0.1 to 0.15, and with point five so as you can see the bigger the step the less details i have on my chart right so i, I like this one this one looks pretty detailed so this is how i do the lines and the steps after i formatted the y-axis i have a next axis format where i'm defining the minimum value and the maximum value of my uh, x-axis uh, since i have information for the year 2018 my minimum value is january 1st maximum value uh, December 31st uh, on dates. And then I get the value of this x-axis format return and I store it on this x-axis format local parameter. By default, we wouldn't need to do it, but since I am refreshing the chart based on the dates I select on my pickers, this is why I'm doing this assignment. I'm going to show it later to you, but by default, and as you can see, I could use the output of the x axis init method straight into the chart. After I've done this, I call this advanced format init server action. And this is where most of the magic happens. Um, OutSystems uses the high charts API on, on its chart, uh, on its charts. Uh, tools and on the high charts website you can find a full API reference of all the uh, of all the, the of all the methods that you can call so if I go back here on my advanced for format in it I have the high charts JSON parameter on which I've added uh, configurations for my plot so I'm using this plot option options uh, section and over here I can see uh, all the plot options uh, configurations that I have. Specifically for plot options, I'm using the series, meaning that this is going to affect the full series. Uh, 
And finally, I'm doing defining the negative color threshold and the data labels. Uh, now, if I go to negative colors, and this is the cool thing I want to show you, I'm going to click here on negative colors, and every section of the high charts API have a try it section, which I can click, and I can see by using JS Fido, I can see the results and tinker with them. So over here I have some uh, some plots with negative uh, values, and I can uh, set, for instance, the negative color uh, instead of this reddish. Let's say I want it to be green, full green, and I click on run. And I can see the result, I can see that it's full green. So, you know, you can fiddle around and play with the parameters and test them uh, on a testing environment. So over here, what I'm doing is I'm saying that for this series, the negative color is red. Threshold is the, say, the negative value. Anything underneath this value is considered negative. Anything above considered positive. So I set my threshold as 1.2. And I've decided to add data labels. So if I go back to my chart, you can see that I have several points with labels in it with the values, right? So these are the data labels. Like over here, this 1.196. This is the, the value for this specific point here. So I can add labels to my points. And you can configure alignment if it is enabled. And on format, I am using the y-axis value. Now, one thing that these labels, for instance, do by default is to not allow overlapping, right? So I have several, I have 365 points here, but I'm only showing a handful of labels. If I, by any chance, allow overlapping, true, I believe that, I believe that is the, uh, oh, I believe that is the parameter. Let's see here, label, uh, it's not labeled, so, what is it again? It's data labels. If I go to data labels, uh, allow overlap. The parameter is called allow overlap, so let's call it allow overlap. True. I click on done and publish again. And let's see the difference on uh, the labels themselves. There you go. And if I check it out, And as you can see, it's much more hectic. So this is the basics on how you can uh, have advanced configurations and advanced settings for your line charts. Hopefully this was useful, and I see you in the next video.